Thank you for watching. This broadcast has been made possible by the friends and partners of Benny Baker Ministries. and then preach to you and prophesy and let's see what God has for us tonight Daniel 3 16 says Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king O Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18, but if not, let it be known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship your golden images which you have set up. Lord, you, and you got to, once again, you have to believe God can bless me. Come on. God can bless me. Yes. I was... Uh, I was sitting at my desk one day. This is, this is a few years ago. I was sitting at my desk one day, and man, I got a hankering for a Diet Pepsi and a Snicker bar. Now, it just so happens I don't I eat either of those today. I don't drink Diet Pepsi, and I don't eat Snicker bars. I got delivered, okay? So don't judge me too bad, you know. Uh, but that's what I wanted. So there was a little Dollar General. I think I counted three Dollar Generals between here and, and, and right down there. You can't throw a rock in any direction and not find a Dollar General. There's a Dollar General right around the corner from the church. And so I, I got in my car. I drove over there. And when I, when I got in, I went and got my Diet Pepsi and my Snicker bar. And that thing was packed. There's people everywhere. And now I hope if you work at Dollar General, don't get mad at me. God bless you. You are doing God's work. Okay, so but but just let me have some fun with you for a moment. But they're all the same. There's usually one person walking around and they don't know where anything is, and they're usually not at the register. And then there might be another person walking around somewhere. I still haven't discovered what they do, but they make an appearance on the occasion. Okay, so I go in and there is a line of people. One person walking around, one person working the register, and a line of people that goes all the way back to the Charmin. And I'm getting in that line, and it's hot in there. I don't know what it was about not having air conditioning that day, but they didn't have it, had the front door open, but didn't do a bit of good. So here I am, I'm standing there, and I'm looking at this Snicker bar that's now melting in this Diet Pepsi and thinking to myself, is any of this worth it? But I was committed. I, you know, there's sometimes you really want something, you know. I guess I wanted it bad enough that day. So I'm standing there in line, and all of a sudden, you know, a few people, you know, check out. There's this lady who's got a buggy full of stuff at Dollar General. Now, don't judge me. Don't get mad at what I'm about to say. I have never bought more than two or three things at a Dollar General in my life. I've usually run in there, grab a little of this, a little of that, and go out. I've never seen anybody. This lady had a buggy full of stuff, you know. And they're ringing it up, and all of a sudden, she reaches in her pocket, and guess what? She whips out coupons. It's got a stack this high, and she's running, running this stuff through, and then they fight over a coupon. It's the wrong size. It's the wrong color. It's the wrong this, and nobody is happy. There is nobody in that Dollar General right now that's in a good mood, including me. I just want a Diet Pepsi and a Snicker bar and go back to my office and do the Lord's work. So I'm standing there, and, and you know, the, the machine would honk, and then they would fight, and then it would honk again, and they would fight. And finally, we get through this, and, you know, once again, everybody's kind of restless, and uh, the lady says it's like $70 and some change. I want to say it's like $78. And she pulls out her debit card, and she swipes her card, and guess what? It doesn't work. And she said, run it again. And so then they started fighting over the debit card. Now, I've been in line for a while. I've been in this store. I'm committed. I'm not going anywhere. And the Lord starts getting chatty with me now. I don't understand why God waits till. You know, I've learned him to be Jehovah Nick of time. Because he comes through just in the nick of time. <laughs> and so here I am. I'm, I'm standing there and God gets chatty with me. He says, 
And I don't know how he talks to you. This is just how he talks to me. He says, son, would you like to show my love today? And I said, Lord, I want to show your love every day. And he says, then I want you to get out of line and go up there and pay for that girl's stuff. And I said, Lord, I'll pay for her stuff, but I'm not getting out of this line. <laughs> God didn't think that was funny. No, y'all laughed. He did not. I asked the guy, I said, can you hold my spot line? I think I can help them out and get the line going a little quicker. And so I said, yeah, sure. And I set my stuff down, and I got up at the front, and I went up to her, and I introduced myself and, and said, uh, I just want to share the love of Jesus with you today. I didn't ask. I just swiped my cards. And I, I think this was, we were still swiping cards. We weren't tapping or putting card chips in. I just swiped my card, put in my pen, and I shared the love of Jesus with her. And I, th- that is an honor. God wants us to be a blessing so we can do that. And so, uh, I just, heaven did not open up. And God say, this is my beloved son, Benny Baker, who did a great thing today. That, that didn't happen. Um, She didn't grab me and hug me and thank me ridiculously. None of that happened. She gave me a good solid nod. I, you know, I invited her to church. I told her Jesus loved her. I shared the gospel with her. I mean, you know, we we are in a very rambunctious line. So I, I wanted to honor everybody, but, you know, that was it. I went, got back in line and stood there, and it's moving a lot faster now. I get up to the front of the front of the checkout, and the little lady is sitting there. I set my stuff down, my melted Snicker bar, and my Diet Pepsi. And the cashier looks at me with tears streaming down her face. And she says, sir, your money is no good here. And I said, it was five minutes ago when I spent 70 bucks on that lady's stuff. And she laughed, and the people in line laughed. And she said, no, sir, I can't, I can't let you do this after what you just did. And now, I didn't ask for anything, okay? That's, that's not my goal. I don't share that because it gets better, okay? I share this because I just want to share the love of Jesus. I think God wants us to do this. And so she looked at me. I'm a preacher. Pastor, I'm looking for an, an opportunity. God, if you'll open up the door, I'll just go walking through it. And she looks at me, and she says, I've never seen someone pay a price for someone else like that. I, ha- I got it. I got a captive audience. I got a Dollar General full of folk that ain't going nowhere. I just stepped back and I said, let me tell you about a price. 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, a man named Jesus paid a price that he did not owe and I could not pay. And he died for you and you and you and you. Y'all think I'm kidding. We had church in the Dollar General. All of a sudden, I took an altar call. I said, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, throw your hands up. And hands went up in the Dollar General. We led him in the sinner's prayer. We shouted, had an altar call, and took up an offering. (laughs) Okay, we didn't take up the offering. But we did pray for the sick. And we did heal, heal the sick. And we did save the lost. See, that's why God wants you blessed. That's why God wants you blessed. God wants you healed. God wants you blessed. And, and God is able to save you. Yes, he, is. he is able to save you. I want you to think about where you were before you got saved. Maybe, you know, maybe I, I was not raised in a church home. I, my mom sent me to church. My dad was an alcoholic. My dad, he, uh, my, my family is right over here uh, from just outside Nashville, Tennessee. The Bakers, my grandpa had a liquor store on Baker Street in uh, Shelbyville, Tennessee. My father was an alcoholic from the time he was 14 until he went into eternity. Spent his whole life on hard drugs and alcohol. I didn't not come from a saved home. I want you to know, but somehow, some way, God led me to a little church where there were praying grandmas and grandpas, and I was able to find my way to that altar. I look back, can I, can I just tell you, I've never been drunk a day in my life. I don't know what it is to, I don't know what it is to be high. I don't, I don't know any of those things. I, I've had my vices. I've had my problems. We've all had them. I'm not saying I was perfect, but I want you to know, coming from a family that was riddled with divorce, my mom had been married multiple times. I think my dad was married almost eight times when my wife and I got married 30 years ago. Come on, somebody. 
I said, we're breaking this. We're breaking this. We're breaking this. Come on. I'm, I'm not judging anybody. If you've been through that, God bless you. I pray for you. I'm sorry you went through that, but I'm just here to tell you that we can break that yoke over our families. God's able to save your marriage. God's able to save your job. God's able to save your children. My, ah, there's prodigal sons and daughters getting ready to come home. Somebody's prodigal baby is getting ready to knock on the door, getting ready to call you. Somebody's prodigal brother and sister is going to get a hold of them and say, I have found Jesus. My God, somebody has got to yell, God is able. God is able. I, uh, I, uh, man, I feel the glory tonight. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Lord, I love you so much. I'm preaching way longer than I planned on tonight, Pastor, but you're just, it's your fault because you're drawing it out of me. God's able to save the lost. Think about where you came from. I remember the night that, that I got saved, that I gave my heart to the Lord. I, I, I remember it so strong. I didn't want to go to church that night. My, my mom made me. She drugged me to church. You ever drug stuff to church? I sure have. And if God can save me, I, I know I've cleaned up pretty good. And my, you know, God's been good to me, you know. I, uh, but I, God's able to save your lost loved ones. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share just, just this last testimony. And then we're going to shift the order of the service. But. My, uh, man, Lord, Lord, I ask right now that you begin to move for prodigal sons and daughters right now. Lord, I love you and I praise you. I am, I was, I, man, the Holy Ghost just took me down a complete, completely different path just for a second. Last summer I was, um, I was, I, I was home for a couple days, and I think I was putting together something for my wife. My wife had a little piece of furniture she bought, and I had to put it together for her. And I was just, you know, I wouldn't be at all spiritual or anything. I'm just putting this little shelf together. And this uh, friend of mine, his name's Greg, Greg Rines, we went to Israel together a few years ago, and we just became good friends, you know. He, uh, he lived in uh, Arlington, Texas, and anytime I was in Arlington, Dallas Fort Worth area I would go and I'd stay with Greg and at least we'd have have a supper uh, there's a little place um, right around the corner he, he owned a little car lot there a little place called Babe's Chicken House has anybody ever heard of Babe's Chicken House if you ever go to Texas you got to hunt down a Babe's Chicken House because that chicken is so good it will make your tongue beat your face to death before you get your first bite I'm telling family style you know if you like good old fashioned uh, southern fried chicken man they, they will hook you up we would meet at Babes and Fellowship and go to services together. Well, he moved, he moved from the Dallas-Fort Worth area to Los Angeles. And I laughed and said, brother, you went the other way because most people are coming from Los Angeles to Texas, you know. It's a, it, it's a big deal. And uh, we laugh about it. And he calls me while I'm putting this furniture together and says, hey, you know, what have you been doing? And been following you on Facebook and see what's been going on. I'm excited about what God's doing in your ministry and and he said, uh, well, I, something really cool happened to me the other day. I said, really? He said, what happened? Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Lake Eufaula. He, Lake Eufaula is a big lake there in Oklahoma. And he, he was a diver in Lake Eufaula. And uh, it's a big deal around there. There's a lot of divers there. And, and he moved out west and became a dive instructor. He'd been just living his dream. That's what he was wanted to do. And, and that's how he decided to retire was as a dive instructor just there, out, just outside Los Angeles. And he said, uh, man, we, we went and we did our class, and these guys were all experienced divers. And, and I, I don't know, so I'm going to talk out of school, so if I say something wrong, I apologize. I'll relay this story the best that I can, okay? But he said, we went through everything, and we went down, and we, we, we were on the, close to the bottom of the, the floor, the area that they were in, and they were going through. And he says, I would do air checks. He said, I went to everybody's tank and was making sure everybody was good. And there was this one guy whose tank wasn't, it wasn't where it ought to be. He didn't have enough air in it. 
He says, we didn't panic, but I let him know we need to start going up. Now, uh, any, those of you who know anything about diving, you don't go from the floor to the top. You have to go in increments because of the pressure. So you have to, you know, uh, you know I, I don't know what the, what the right word is, but you have to, for whatever reason, you have to go up so that the pressure don't cause you problems. And he said, so I tell him we have to start going up. And he said, so he went and told the other divers what was going on, that he joined him. And he said, and he checked his air again. He says, this time he does not have enough air to make it to the top. He says, at this point, and, and I think they needed to take two more breaks before they, before they surfaced. He said, uh, we, he did not have enough air. And he says, and then all of a sudden, the next thing he knew, he said, I, you know, we could breathe back and forth with mine. And he said, so we started doing that. And he says, and the next thing I know, we are on the bottom of the ocean. And he is on top of me, fighting me and struggling. And he's going to kill us both. And he said, all of our training is to push him away and just let him be. This just be the, this, is, this is it. He said, otherwise, it's not just him that's going to die. It could be both of us. And he said, but Brother Biddy, there was something in me that couldn't let that happen. He said, there was something in me that could not push that man away and just let him die. And he said, so I fought with him. And he said, I did everything I could do to, to try to, uh, try to, uh, uh, maintain my breathing and, and, uh, settle him down and, and calm him down. And I could not do it. And he said, but finally I was able to grab him. I got him under control there. Now at this point, there's no, uh, de depressurization. He says, we're just going to the top. Otherwise we're both going to die in, in, in the, in the, in the ocean. And he said, so they just swam to the top. And when they got to the top, he said, they started, uh, yelling for the boat to come and pick them up and they swing over there real quick and, and they, uh, they grab them and they throw them in the boat and they take them to a depressurization tank and he said I think he said they had to sit in there I think for eight hours or something in order to get their bodies right and he said I sat there by myself all this time and all I thought about was saving that guy he said because I could have let him go and he said um, after they were done with the uh, with the process, he said they took us to the hospital. And they had to do, I mean, these massive tests because they had to check them for so much. You know, and again, I don't understand all of this. And I hope I told this. I told the story the best that I could. It's his story, not mine, but it bears sharing. But I guess if he had air bubbles or something, you know, they could die, you know. And so he said they run all these tests. And they said that all of a sudden a doctor comes in and says, Mr. Rhines, says, how are you today? And he said, well, you know, I'm really good. He says, you've had an exciting day, huh? He said, I laughed and said, yes. He says, well, we have a problem. He said, when we ran our test, we found a problem with your heart. And he said, it's not a problem. has nothing to do with the events of today. It's something that we just, by chance, caught today. And he says, we need to schedule you for emergency surgery. Because if we don't deal with this, you're going to die. And he said that, I, you know, within 24 hours, they've got him. I don't remember the time frame, okay? But, but in a short period of time, they've got him in, and they're operating on him, and they're fixing whatever's wrong, repairing his heart. And he comes out of there, and he says, he says I'm sitting there in recovery. And he says, I began to go back to the, the events of that day. And he says, and at the end of the day, I thought I was saving somebody, but at the end of the day, they saved me. They saved me. And that moved me so much because so often that's, that's how it is in the kingdom. You know, we're really struggling, really trying, and then God sends somebody along that just opens up that door and our family comes rushing in. Our loved ones comes rushing in. If, uh, in, in, I, I, if you've got somebody that can come to the keyboard or the piano or... Or, or if you have music that you play, I'm not sure what's, what's right here at this time. But if you could just come and just play softly, something worshipful. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. you guys did such a great job on worship. You guys do such a good job. But Jesus is able to save your family. Yes, he is. Can save them. Every one of them. There was a little lady that went to my wife's church when she was a kid growing up. And she came in and she's, she's believing for her husband to be saved. 
And she came in and every, every service without fail. Pray for my husband. Pray for his salvation. Every service. And one day she came in with a little suit on a hanger. A little shirt, a little tie, a little pair of pants, a little jacket, a little hat. And she'd set that on the seat next to her. And people, there'd be people come and try and sit in that seat. And she'd tell them, no, can't sit there. That's my husband's seat. Years went by, but the day came where all of a sudden that old boy come walking through those doors wearing that suit. God's able to save. Stand to your feet tonight. If you'll just slip up your little hands in the heavenlies and just love on Jesus for a moment. God told me to tell you tonight that He is able. I am... Um, this is not what I planned to preach. I mean, I prepared for this service, for this message. But this isn't what I intended to preach tonight at all. But this afternoon, I, I got in, I guess I got to the room around, around three o'clock. And uh, usually at two o'clock, between two and three, I tuck myself away. And I just spend my afternoon praying and listening to worship and getting my mind ready for the service and I'd, I'd really planned a different message but I just really felt the Lord impressing me to tell you that he is able whatever it is you need he's able to do it he's able to save you he's able to heal you he's able to deliver you he's able to set you free and I can't get away from he's able to save your family I've got I, I'm fortunate my children my children all love the Lord and are serving the Lord. I'm, I'm so fortunate. My brothers and sisters, they, you know, they all, that's a miracle. That's the testimony I was going to share tonight, but the Lord took me to Greg and wanted me to share with you about Greg. My sisters and brothers are, are saved and know Jesus. Man, my brother is, uh, my wife's my best friend. Man, my brother, man, he's my best friend. We talk every day. Today, I, I needed him this week extra and so I call him and he'll pray for me I couldn't imagine him not being in heaven couldn't imagine it and I, and I really think some of you you have loved ones that you want to see saved maybe tonight maybe you're here and you'll say you know brother Benny my, my heart my life's not what it should be I don't know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I don't know if I died tonight that heaven would be my home. Maybe that's you tonight. We want to make that right. I would not, I would not feel good about this service if I didn't give you the opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So tonight if you're here and you're saying, Brother Benny, that's me. I don't know him, but I want to make it right tonight. Throw your hand up real quick. I want to pray for you. I, you know, God kind of stopped the service for me to do this, so... So if that's you tonight, let me know who you are. We want to pray with you. We love you. Amen. Lord, I just love you. I want to pray, and then I'm going to change the order of things, and we're going to shift just a little bit. But, but once again, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and I, 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 could not, I could not change this service without giving you the chance to receive him. You don't, you, we all get one life. That's it. That's it. And what we do with this life, what we do in it, there's, there's no, there's no do-overs. And God never blesses us beyond a point of opportunity. This is your opportunity to receive Him tonight. So if that's you, just real quick, slip up your hand. We want to pray for you. Amen. Thank you for your honesty tonight. If you'll bow your head just for a moment, I want to pray. Lord Jesus, as you have instructed me, I have told your people that you are able to move for them. Lord, you, not only are you able, but tonight I believe you want to move for them. You want their families saved more than they want their families saved. So Lord, tonight I send angels. I send ministering angels to your people, to prodigal sons and daughters. And Lord, I ask that you touch their hearts. Send somebody across their path. Send someone. No matter where they are, Lord, prick their hearts and turn their hearts towards you. Lord, I thank you for it. Tonight, I'd like to ask something. If there are those of you that got prodigal sons and daughters that you're believing for, I want to agree with you. 
li- listen, I, you know, I know you've got somebody that you're burdened for. I have a brother-in-law that I am, I am burdened for. And I pray for him regularly. So tonight, if you have somebody like that that you're burdened for, prodigal sons, prodigal daughters, a brother, a sister, a, a spouse, a mother, a father, if that's you, I want to blend my faith with yours tonight, and I want to believe with you for their salvation. If that's you, just come very quickly here to the front and let us pray for you. Come quickly. Don't. Wait, I hope don't that wait. you've enjoyed today's broadcast. I know that I'm thankful that you are a part of our ministry. Thank all of our friends and partners for coming out and being a part of our live prophetic encounters, for following us on Facebook and on YouTube, being such an intricate part of our ministry. Those of you that that aren't already, want you to make sure to sign up for our prophetic devotions. Every week we send out just a quick video and a prophetic word that will be a great blessing to you. You can just stop by BennyBaker.com and all that information is there. We want to ask you to this ministry has been a blessing to you. We want to just ask you to prayerfully consider sowing a seed into this ministry. We are making a huge impact on the world, literally taking the gospel of Jesus Christ into millions of homes through our prophetic encounters, through our outreaches, through television and internet ministries. Man, God has privileged us to have the opportunity to take the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, reaching as many people as possible. That's our mission. That's simply to take the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, reach as many people as possible. We want to thank you so much for being a part of the ministry and prayerfully considering sowing a seed. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, whatsoever you sow, that also shall you reap. Oh, what an awesome, what an awesome word. Whatever you give, whatever you give into the kingdom, that's what you're going to reap back. You, you know if you take a tomato seed, you plant it out there in the garden, you don't just get back one tomato, do you? You get back a whole harvest. The same is true with corn or potatoes or, or apple seeds or any whatever you put in the ground, you get back a whole harvest in new season, right? Same is true with the kingdom of God. Whatever you put in the ground, you don't just get back what you gave, you get back a whole harvest, right? One of my favorite scriptures is Mark chapter 10, verse 30. It says this, it says, Whatsoever you give up, houses, land, family, relationships, any of those things, we've all done that, haven't we? The Bible says, now in this lifetime, you will receive a hundredfold, and in the world to come, eternal life. What an awesome promise. You don't just get a harvest, you get eternal life. God's got us covered on both sides, here and when we get to heaven, right? So today, this ministry has been a blessing to you. Stop by the website, bennybaker.com, and sow a seed. Go ahead, right there on the left-hand side, there's a spot to hit a little button and become a monthly partner, and we appreciate it. It would help us take the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world. Thank you again for being a part of this broadcast. God bless you. Now go out and have your best day ever.